Hello there, YouTube and makers, and thank you for joining my channel today. It's great to have you, and I'm great to share with you the assembly on the mill, the Sureline 5800 Next Gen Mill, which is the largest model that Sureline makes. One of the reasons why I want to do this video, and why I like watching this style of video, and seeing the nuts and bolts of how something goes together, so that I get a deeper and more intimate understanding of how something functions. And when I was shopping for my mill, I really would have liked to seen a deep in-depth dive into the assembly of the various mills from the different manufacturers that specialize in the tabletop or micro mills. I'm really looking forward to taking this pile of bits and making it into a mill. So come on over here and join me at the bench and let's make a mill. If you're following along, I'll working off of my milling machine assembly and instruction guide. And it will be here and my copy on page seven. So the 2000 and 5800 series mills. And there are these seven steps. These instruction manuals are available on Shoreline's website. I'll be sure to post the link somewhere in the video, probably towards the end or something in the description below. And you can kind of see how this goes. One thing I do want to point out is that there is an extra set of holes here in line with the screw. That was by accident and there are extra holes in line here as well. And they're tapped. As the manual here does show those holes in the base. So I want to be sure I know which ones I'm threading these screws into. I'll go ahead and remove this. Set it aside. This is quite awkward. I feel I should probably remove the cross line tape. I believe it should all roughly line up. And indeed it does appear to. And hopefully you can see, here are those two screws that I just installed. Just to be safe, I'm going to go ahead and reinsert my tube to protect that screw. It slips in nice and easy, and if this end gets to be in the way during the assembly, I'll go ahead and just take it off as I need it. Now this is some place where things are unclear. So the instructions call for part 56130. And I believe that's for the 2000 model. As mine's a 5800, it's 56140. And it doesn't sp specify whether these tightening areas go up or down, but the illustration shows and tends to indicate that these, this will go down into the column. And they suggest using a testable wrench. Snug, but not gorilla tight. Next thing is to attach the mill column and using a 1116 or 17 millimeter wrench. And loosening this screw, or nut I should say, which is quite tight. Tighten this down. See that? As you can see here, here's the gib lock they use, and another nice little oil cup. Nice markings. 
since I don't have access to this bolt anymore, I'm going to make it just a little bit more snug. For now, I'm not doing any Loctite stuff. And then I bring in this close so I don't have to fight with gravity and center balance. It goes on top. I do need some clearance here. I'm going to take my 1 16 again and get that nice and snug. Now I wanted just enough clearance here because I've got to install this column adjustment block. And as you can see here, there is a flat on this ball. So I would loosen this. And then this longer set screw would screw through this threaded hole here and push down on this flat. And that would allow, I believe, fine tuning of this angle on the column. So I'm going to go ahead and screw this all in. I am rotating between the two, just like working on a, putting on a tire of a car, just snugging each one a little, moving to the other. All right, now that that's nice and tight, go ahead and put this all the way down. Something that I had learned when doing the lathe headstock was that on this guard, there's a bit of flashing. Uh, I didn't think it was consequential. But I actually had a little bit of issue with my headstock on the lathe. And I actually had to take it all apart and use a good quality hobby or exacto style knife with a fresh blade and remove some of the flashing. So I'm just going to preemptively do that. Here, the 5800 doesn't seem as bad, but just being preempted. So I can see a little bit of flashing coming off there. First thing I'm going to have to do is remove this pulley. And that's going to be this small one here. And that's quite tight. Boy. So I'm going to orientate to the way it shows in the manual. Put this one on first. I'll reattach my pulley. In the same position as the factory. Since the factory had it tight, I'll make this tight and tight as well. Attach these guys. So you'll see there's a little screw through this column. So I'm going to go ahead and screw that sucker in. Again, those holes where I had trouble with the lid, with the flashing, wouldn't allow it to sit flush cause it to buckle so make sure those are nice and clean and I'll use my small adjustable wrench because I don't want to overdo do it here that is a wee little bolt okay good Next, gonna untangle this belt, made in Japan. So, looks identical to the one that comes with the lathe. I'm gonna slip that over, attach the column face. So, I'm gonna line that up, it all snaps nice and lovely together. 
So I'll need to go grab what looks like a Phillips. But I'm gonna go ahead and start these so I don't lose my nuts. That, yeah, I'll just leave it at that. So I don't go nuts losing my nuts. Of course, I always like to hand thread as far as I can to make sure nothing is cross threaded. Make sure the belt is in there correctly. Well, I'll go ahead and screw these in. I definitely don't want to overdo it here because while there is a nut on the other side, it is captured by this plastic. And the last thing I want to do is strip anything out. To attach the rheostat, there are these ears. Yeah. And those ears correspond to this bar. So I've got to slip, so I'm gonna loosen this up just a touch more. Same with this side. I got a little ahead of myself. So that this should be easier to slip on. The hardest thing here is the cord management, I believe. Oops. There it goes. So I'm gonna now go ahead and tighten that up. Again, not so tight that anything strips out. Just snug. So now my rheostat is attached to the motor assembly. Found that the mill setup was a little bit different than the lathe in that, well, in terms of flashing, that the lathe had some flashing and some kind of critical areas that kept the belt guard from fitting nice and tight and snug. While on this mill, the flashing was was not really in any place critical it seemed, but more in kind of aesthetic areas like along the edges here. So now that that's all cleaned up, it's ready to keep going. This mill works by this bar here attaches here and the tension that is placed on this belt is affected by this bar sliding in and out. So if I need to switch the pulleys like here on the headstock, oh, my key fell out. Um, I can loosen this and slide it in to relieve tension. And then once ready, I can slide it back out to increase tension. And as the belt wears in or maybe in the future stretches, I can also increase that tension to keep it the same. This block actually brings it to where the headstock is in the dead center of the table. So it brings it further away from the column and puts it dead center on the table where in which the column is as close as possible and nice and tight. But also it gives more distance and travel available to reach all the, seems to reach all the corners of the upgraded an extra large uh, tooling plate that I upgraded to. Now that tooling plate, as seen in the previous unboxing, did not come with my mill. It was an or in the A package. It was a chosen for or selected for upgrade. It's going to begin by oh, keyway slipped out again loosening these bolts. And if you remember, this bracket is going to attach here. So this one with the extra sliders goes to the motor assembly. And so we have our motor assembly here. Which will slide on super awkwardly. I'm being very careful to avoid laying it on the spindle or getting anything on there. It's a little awkward with these cords.
but still doable. Now before I fuss with that, I am going to go ahead and take two washers, put them on one of these bolts here. There we go. And I'm gonna just lightly thread that in just with some hand pressure. So you can see how two bolts, or two, excuse me, two washers connect to the one bolt. So we can kind of see that. Let's make it a little bit snug, not a lot. Bring it in as close as possible. Now there is a cutout as you can see here and I believe there's something in the manual that says that if it rubs to go ahead and remove a little bit of material. I'm not super concerned about that right now because I'm just trying to get it together. And I'm going to space it out here in a minute. Let's take my next two washers. Do everything I can not to drop this and damage that spindle. Let's see, I'm going to try to use gravity in my favor here. So, try push these, pull these apart, get some tension. The book is very clear about not overdoing it. So that seems good. Rotate this to check to make sure it's all lined up and make sure I don't have any belt guard plastic rubbing against the wheel. Looks clean. Gently set that down. I'm going to take my last bolt and this is the mounting plate. goes on in the back a little bit different oh and the mounting plate does have an orientation hopefully you could see that low spot or divot here because that's where the belt is going to pass underneath and close this up the edge there it goes so just a little snug don't want to overdo it because I don't want to compress things and have anything rub against the belt. A word on assembly. As you can see from the lathe headstock versus the mill, the concepts are very similar and the parts very similar as well. Where the assembly has this hole and a pin that or a screw that sits down and sits the pointed screw that draws it all together on the mill it has to be attached and held in and pressed in against the column face like that so that makes it a bit of a challenge to say at least because at the these awkward cords and fighting against the gravity versus on the mill it was fairly easy and keep in mind that Sureline specifically says to press it together while tightening this screw on the side. And here on the lathe, it was a bit easier in that it just comes straight down and, and I work with gravity to hold it down and I can come in and tighten that screw. I've gone ahead and tilted the mill head column as far back as possible. I've got, I've already taken out uh, the adjusting screw from the adjusting block back here to give myself as much range of motion as possible and then tilted this back until just before it was going to touch. So nothing gets marred or scratched up. 
And I'm hoping this way will allow me to use gravity to attach the motor and headstock assembly. So I'm going to go ahead and insert my key. So now that the keyway is orientated correctly, I'm going to go ahead and install this and hopefully get a little help from good old gravity to keep this nice and tight. And it does seem to work well. So the book specifically says to pinch and hold this down as tight as possible. And it just happens in my hands, it's happened to me long enough it fits. If they weren't, I might need to use some padded jaws for something or put some padding in a large C clamp just to get this. Oh boy, it's really straining my fingers. But it's getting there. Cry once, do it once, right? Nice and snug. That wasn't too bad. That was a nice assembly. And I kind of enjoyed that. I really feel like that it gives me a real intimate sense of how the machine goes together and how it works. So to me, it's kind of really important to do the assembly and to get really in there with my own hands. It gives me a lot more confidence in the machine and the quality of the machine that I've gotten. Now, one thing that I do want to bring up is that the mill column extension, it actually is part of the machine package. Not the package A, but the, the machine package in general from Sherline. And the website is the most updated version and does explain that the column extension is included and its intent is to give, give a greater range of access on, on the Y axis for the mill. And, as a bonus, that specific part number says that it can be interchanged with the lathe. So that's pretty awesome. And in fact, Sherline encourages you to know that you don't need both a lathe column extension riser and this column, you can just use the one for both machines. So that's kind of nice in staying in the same family of equipment. I think that I'm going to hold off for now on putting the mill cover on. It takes a surprisingly finicky thing to get on and took a little bit longer to film than I would have liked. And so I'm going to save that for another time so that be sure you hit that like button if you like this video as well as subscribe and the bell notification so you can see when that video posts of how I finish off the mill. But it is done. It's looking great. and I'm really excited to use it. Till next time. Stay safe, have fun out there, and keep making chips.